Okay, so we are now focusing on the proof of this theorem that will give us the existence of maximal tori in compact matrix groups. So in this video, what we're going to prove is the following lemma, which is that any compact um, matrix group G contains a compact abelian matrix group um, which is not just trivial which is let's say which is path connected and non-trivial Okay, so in the next video, we'll show that any compact abelian matrix group is uh, path connected is a torus. Um, so that will together that will prove part one. Okay, so here's the proof. Um, let little h inside the Lie algebra of G be an abelian subalgebra. What does that mean? Abelian subalgebra means it's a subspace of little g on which the Lie bracket vanishes. That's just because, I mean, this is the commutator bracket, so it vanishes when two matrices commute. So that's why the word abelian is being used here. So first of all, there is an abelian subalgebra that's not just zero. So note that um, any uh, line in little g is an abelian subalgebra. Because if you have a line, you know, two points on the line are just rescalings of each other. So um, if uh, lambda 1 x and lambda 2 x are the elements living on some line, then um, their bracket is just 0 because x can meet with itself. So there exist non zero abelian subalgebras, um, but the, the proof we're going to give will work for any abelian subalgebra, but th there is at least one. Um, so how are we going to use this abelian subalgebra to produce um, an abelian subgroup? We're just going to exponentiate it. So here's the claim. exp of little h, that is the set of all exp x's with x in little h. This is an abelian subgroup of g. Um, what we want is a compact abelian subgroup. This is not necessarily compact. So claim two is that if we take the topological closure of this guy, this is a compact abelian subgroup. And together these two claims with this observation that there are abelian subalgebras we can use, um, will prove the lemma. So let's see um, why the claims are true. Well, basically they follow from the um, law, law of logarithms. So we have x of x1, x of x2 equals x of x1 plus x2 for all x1, x2 in uh, little h, because h is an abelian subalgebra, the matrices x1 and x2 commute, so we have the ordinary law of logarithms. This implies that x of little h is a subgroup of g. It's not always clear that if you have a least subalgebra and you exponentiate it, 
you get a subgroup. And that's not true in general. But in this case, it is because if you have two such matrices, x x1, x x2, and you multiply them together, what you get is x of x1 plus x2, and that is in x of little h. So it's closed in the group theory sense as a subgroup. And moreover, it's abelian. Because uh, you can just switch x1 and x2 over inside the exp, and you get exp x1 exp x2 equals um, exp x2 exp x1. Okay, so that's why this is giving us an abelian subgroup of G. Um, proof of two, why do we get a compact abelian subgroup when we take the closure? Well, at some point we proved as an exercise that if you have a subgroup and you take its topological closure, you get another subgroup. So we don't need to check that this is a subgroup. We need to check that it's compact and abelian. And actually, we don't need to check that it's compact because this is just going to follow from some point set topology. So this is um, because the clo any closed subset of a compact set is compact. G is compact. This is closed by construction, so this is compact. So the key thing is to check that it's abelian. So let's get a new page. So what is um, the topological closure? If I have a subgroup H inside G, I'll just call it H instead of X with little h now. Um, so if this is a subgroup, H bar just consists of limit points. of sequences H, K in H, uh, which maybe they don't converge in H, but they converge in G. Remember, G is a topologically closed group. So suppose I have uh, sequences H, K converging to H and uh, well, let's just call it G, K converging to G with H, K and G, K both in this subgroup H. What I know is that G, K, H, K equals H, K, G, K for all K because H is abelian. Right, I'm trying to prove that the topological closure of an abelian subgroup is abelian. And so this implies that the limit of G, K, H, K equals the limit of H, K, G, K, because right, they're just equal for all K. Um, so what we want to show is that the limit of G, K, H, K is just G, H, and the same with G and H the other way around. It's the same proof. Okay, because that will then prove that GH equals HG, which, which will prove that H bar is abelian. But this just follows from the fact that matrix multiplication is continuous. So let M from GLNR times GLNR to GLNR be matrix multiplication. In other words, M of X, Y equals X times Y. This is continuous. It's actually, you know, polynomial in the matrix entries. So it's very much continuous. So um, what we have is that the limit of M uh, G, K, H, K that is another way of saying lim of g k times h k. That's okay. Uh, equals m of the limit. Right. If you have a continuous function, you can bring the limit inside 
take the limit there and you get m of lim gk lim hk which is then g times h okay so that actually suffices to prove that um, gh equals hg so that shows that h bar is abelian okay so this is how we're going to construct um, a compact abelian matrix group inside G. So the next step will be to prove that any compact abelian path connected matrix group is um, a torus. So I haven't actually proved that this guy we've constructed is path connected. Uh, I could, but what I'll do instead is prove that, you know, just take the path component of the identity and that will be path connected. Just before I sign off, I want to give you an example to show why I went to all this bother of taking the closure. Um, so let's let's consider the torus, the two-dimensional torus, and let's slice it open along a circle and then unwrap it and we get a cylinder like this. And then let me slice it again across like this and unwrap and we get a square. So I can think of a two-dimensional torus as a square with top and bottom identified and the right and left hand sides identified. And I can think of a sort of one parameter subgroup in this two-dimensional torus. This is, this is the group u1 times u1. And this is like the theta one direction, the theta two direction. So I can think of a one parameter subgroup as just a line, a straight line in this square except that whenever it goes off the top it rejoins at the bottom moving in the same direction okay so let's just pick a one parameter subgroup that is x of an abelian subalgebra namely x of a line in the Lie algebra but if we pick that line to have irrational slope then what happens is you know this wraps around um, infinitely often i'm not going to be able to draw it um, but you can imagine it kind of wraps and gets closer and closer to itself never actually touches itself and it ends up kind of filling up the torus it doesn't really fill it but it comes arbitrarily close to filling the torus so um, in this case we don't get a very nice group we get a sort of dense line wrapping around inside a torus um, so in that case you need to take the topological closure of this red subgroup and what you do when you, what you get when you do that is this two-dimensional group here. So even if you start with you know a one-parameter subgroup, sort of x t x with t and r, it could be that when you take the topological closure, you get u one to the something, you know maybe u one squared in this example. So in other words, k can be uh, large here. So this is just an example to show you why I was going to the bother of taking topological closure. It's because if I just do part one and take x of some um, abelian subalgebra, generically what I'm going to get is something like this, some hideous subgroup that I don't really want.